All right, guys, today we're gonna to be trying something a little bit different and hopefully enjoyable. I don't really know of anyone else out there doing this on YouTube, so I thought it'd be kind of fun. And as someone who does enjoy guns and video games, I thought what would be better than trying to make your very own guns that you use or you know play around LARP with in real life in video games. After all, for me, at least personally, a lot of video games have inspired firearm purchases. Now, the FNFAL isn't exactly 100% that. I probably would have bought an FNFAL with or without video games, but no doubt there are tons of video games from things like Rainbow Six Siege to, of course, countless Call of Duties that feature the FNFAL. So I thought today I would try to essentially recreate to the best of my abilities my FNFAL in Call of Duty and jump into some sessions, some servers, and actually see how I fared. And once again, when I say as best as I can, I am going to try to cover it as best as I can. And uh, yeah, so first off, before we get too much into how I fared, how I did with this gun um, in game, let's go over how I recreated it. So of course, once again, with video games, you're not gonna be able to perfectly recreate everything. Now, this is indeed a DS Arms OSW, and uh, I was able to pretty accurately overall recreate it, but there were a few things. So first off, starting off with the muzzle device, you guys will probably notice in the game, um, there's essentially like an A2 birdcage flash hider on there. Mine actually has a real uh, FNFAL flash hider on there because this is an FNFAL um, at the core. But uh, yeah, so that is something that's just something that I couldn't change at all. Couldn't get one of these on it in game anyways. Next to that, um, I didn't have anything for a light or a laser because you're only allowed to put five attachments on the gun, so you gotta be a little bit picky. Now, moving on down, we put the operator foregrip on this guy, and I feel like the operator foregrip was the closest thing to this kind of shorter sized foregrip that gives it that kind of tactical appearance. Now, moving back on the firearm, we see a 30 round magazine. Now, weirdly in the video game, I don't know why um, it's like this, probably just for aesthetics, but Call of Duty um, represented the 30 round magazine, which this is a 30 round magazine to recreate how I actually run my gun. Um, they recreated the 30 round magazine to have like a slight curvature to it, which is weird because as you can clearly see um, with this firearm, the 30 round magazine is just flat essentially. There's a little bit of a, you know, uh, end on it, but yeah, these are flat magazines. And with 308, 308 doesn't have the same stacking problem that things like 5.56 and 7.62 Soviet or 7.62 by 39 have. There's a reason why magazines are curved and it's due to the ammunition itself having that curvature, right? It's not due to the actual aesthetic. So with 762 by 51 or 762 NATO, it is a straight straight round. It doesn't have any issues stacking. So whether it's 20 rounds, 10 rounds, 40 rounds, 30 rounds, it's always gonna be a straight magazine. It just gets longer. So anyways, a little bit weird, but yeah. Anyways, uh, moving on from that, we go up to the optic. Now the optic, once again, is another thing I couldn't perfectly replicate, but essentially there was an LPVO for picking and it gave you the ability to swap from three power to six power, which to be fair, this LPVO itself can go from three to six power, um, but this one also being that it's a real life LPVO can go from one power all the way up to six power. So it gives you a little bit more real life versatility, but I think for the main effect of what this gun was, it captured it pretty well. And then lastly, of course, I replicated the stock actually pretty accurately. This is a pretty pretty accurate stock. Um, of course, I'm trying to remember what the one in game is. It definitely has a real life counterpart and it is not exactly this model, but it is very similar. So overall, I have to say for recreation ability, I was able to get this gun pretty darn exact. Um, another thing I failed to mention was the barrel on this guy. And the barrel is a OSW 13.1, which technically I think this one is a 12 and a half with a pinned and welded uh, flash guard on here, flash hider. So technically, I think the real life OSW is a little bit shorter, but overall, I was able to recreate this gun fairly accurately. 
accurately. All right, so that's kind of the modifications and what I did to recreate this guy. Now let's actually talk about some of the performance. So overall, I have to say, um, it was definitely a little bit clunky. Now, just like in real life, this is a semi-auto only rifle. Now in true, true real life, FALs were select fire back in the good old days. Um, but in-game representation, it is a semi-auto only rifle. So it actually is a fairly accurate representation of what you would actually experience with this gun you know this is the limitations the pros the cons of just semi-automatic fire so actually you know fairly legitimate uh, i can't really like say like oh yeah but it was running full auto in the video game this is legitimately how you'd run it so um obviously it is a video game but yeah i think it held up overall pretty well once i got used to the fact that this is a semi-auto you got to work the trigger pretty quick in game to make it effective and once again of course you know being a video game people are running all kinds of random guns and you know there's always gonna be people that are better than you and such stuff but overall i have to say how this gun held up it held its own pretty darn well and i will say i think especially because i was happening to play team deathmatch um which is my preferred method or preferred game mode to to play um, a lot of the maps really like there were a few times where using an lpvo came in handy and being able to you know go to that six power magnification was nice but definitely never necessary so i feel like um the the optic itself in real life being able to have that single power of you know non-magnification is actually pretty nice but in a video game you can't really you know like match that um, no power to six power type of uh, pro that you have with an LPVO. So that was a little bit of a, an effect that's lost in game and definitely hurt not only like the ABS, the aim down sight speed, but also it affected, like I said, just overall usability. Because of course, even in real life, if say, you know, you have this thing cranked out at three times magnification, you're looking through, you know, it's going to obscure your ability to, you know, see things up close. So if you're doing a lot of like room clearing in a video game, um, this is not going to be the most optimal thing at three times or six times it's really gonna suck in those regards so anyways um Outside of that, I think it did hold its own pretty darn well. And of course, the fun thing about, you know, even in the video game, the hard hitting 308 was pretty well, um, pretty well modeled. There were quite a few times where, you know, so long as you're, you know, like getting your, doing your due diligence, getting accurate shots, you can get very, very good um, time to kill or, um, the overall amount of rounds you have to put downrange to stop an enemy. So overall, I will say the 308 was pretty mo pretty well modeled. There were like, you know, oftentimes three to four shots at most, um, quite a few times one shot kill um, was very achievable. So I think the overall representation of 308 was good. Obviously, of course, this isn't real life, so Of course, this isn't quite real life, so, you know, obviously rounds are all pretty darn deadly in real life, but uh, I will say the stopping power of 308 is definitely greater than that of something like 5.56 or 7.62 by 39. So it was, in my opinion, pretty accurately represented. Now, aside from that, what would I rate this thing as a score? from like one to 10 in its effectiveness. In my opinion, starting off, uh, I started off pretty bad with this gun and I was like, dang, maybe this is gonna be like a four, maybe a five. Um, but overall, I would say I was able to come back with this gun pretty well in game. And uh, I would rate this thing at about probably like a seven. Uh, but there's definitely better guns to use in game. And my particular setup, once again, is definitely a little bit more practical in real world because your optic choice makes a huge, huge impact on gameplay. And so being the fact you're running a powered optic, you know, like a three to six power optic in the game, that makes it a lot less effective in traditional, you know, like close quarter engagements in game. So you're going to be fighting that optic quite a bit. However, once I got adjusted to everything and adjusted to the overall mechanics of this gun, I feel like I did pretty darn well. And once again, it's always fun to be able to, you know, build out a gun that you have, you know, like you built out in real life, build a build it in a video game and play with it because like i said a lot of times like with myself you know um the games that 
we play inspire the guns that we want. And you'll see this a lot in other gun tubers, such as, you know, the FN F2000 or FS2000, um, things like the FN P90. Um, talk about a lot of FN product firearms here, but truly things like that, um, even though like realistically things like the FN F2000 was this really defunct bullpup rifle that honestly never really caught on and probably for good reason. It was kind of a bad gun, but you know, people like them, things like the G36, uh, is another really good representation. A lot of people love that. And of course we know the Tommy built, um, what is it, TP7, essentially a spinoff of H&K's MP7, recently released and there've been a ton of people, ton of fanboys um, going for that. And and once again, you know, a lot of that has to do with, you know, things like pop culture, things like video games. There's no doubt that, you know, it's cool to have the same guns that you play with in video games. And uh, yeah, so I figured I would take that and run with it and essentially see how effective can you actually build out a, or how effective can a gun that you build out in real life actually be in a video game. So like I said, I feel like I was more effective than not. Um, definitely far from the best, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the gameplay footage there to kind of show what I'm talking about and uh, hopefully that supports the rating pretty well. But overall, a pretty cool system. And like I said, I thought it was a neat idea to build out this gun in a game and then go and see, see how good I could actually be with it. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video guys. As always, God bless and I'm out.